द वे फॉर्वर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह यू एस प्रेजिडेंशियल इलेक्शन नू एक हफ्ते तो भी का टाइम रह गया है और दोनों जेडे कैंडिडेट्स हैं वो इस वेले अपनी क्लोजिंग्स कर दे पे इन क्लोजिंग स्टेटमेंट्स अपनी दें दे पे इन कि क्यों जेडी कंट्री है उन अनु अपना नेक्स्ट प्रेसिडेंट चूज करे असी अपनी कम्युनिटी दे डिफरेंट मेंबर्स ना गल कीती है फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम उन अदा असी परसपेक्टिव जाने हैं कि वो पॉलिटिक्स नो और आज असी जिन्हन आल गल करन जा रहे हैं ओ हैं एक यूथ यंग मेंबर साड़ी कम्युनिटी दे समय किंद्रा समय लॉ स्कूल दे फर्स्ट ईयर रिचन एक यंग बंदे साड़ी कम्युनिटी दे समय तोड़ा द वे फॉरवर्ड एक बहुत बहुत स्वागत है थैंक यू थैंक यू आशी अपने व्यूअर्स ने दसिए कि समय एक बड़े मोटिवेटेड यंग यू नो मेंबर है कि साड़ी कम्युनिटी दे समय आई यू ऑलरेडी अ मेंबर ऑफ़ द डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी yeah i have been and uh i've done you know i've been part of the democratic party since high school and i've had the opportunity to work on campaigns and in a bunch of different offices um all in democratic politics so it's been a great experience and i've loved every part of it ਇਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਯੰਗ ਮੈਂਬਰਸ ਹੈਗੇ ਉਹ ਇਸ ਮੁਲਕ ਦੇ ਸਿਵਲ ਡਿਸਕੋਰਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਸ ਮੁਲਕ ਦੀ ਪੋਲਿਟਿਕਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਅੱਗੇ ਆਣ ਔਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਅੱਜ ਸਮੇਂ ਤੋਂ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਾਣਨਾ ਚਾਹਾਂਗੇ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਵੇਖਦੇ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਮੁਲਕ ਦੀ ਪੋਲਿਟਿਕਸ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਡੇ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਰੋਲ ਨੂੰ ਔਰ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਹ ਇਸ ਕੰਟਰੀ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਪੋਲਿਟਿਕਸ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਇਫੈਕਟ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਸਾਡੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਨੂੰ same to begin with tell us what are the biggest issues for you in this election yeah so the biggest the biggest issues with me are acceptance and equality mm-hmm. i think we have two very different candidates and how they talk about people especially people who don't look like them i mean you have one candidate who has told congress people who congress women who don't look like the stereotypical congress person to go back to their countries um i remember when i heard that comment made um it hit home at me because i know i'm you know i'm sure you've heard comments like that in the past and i have as a young sick you know turban wearing sick you know go back to your country you don't belong here and so i think that's a big issue for me is who which candidate represents in america where i'm accepted and i think that's that's the biggest thing that's come down to for me and i think that choice is clear when you just hear how these people how these two candidates talk about other people that don't look like them mm-hmm. and you know I, a part of being a part of the political process is being accepted in the first place and i think it's been made very clear that there's one party and sort of one candidate who is willing to accept you for anyone for who they are regardless of where they come from and what they look like what they believe in and there's one person who really doesn't believe that way and 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 seems have a much more narrow view of what it means to be american and be a part of the process Uh, you know the same je to si gal kiti hai this is very central to i think uh, the politics of uh, both parties both candidates or kive uh, loki citizens is no uh, you know perceive kar den because uh, somebody is trying to you know uh, wider their net or a candidate it appears as if ki unna ek base hai ga jis nu no, oh completely uh, you know they wants to cater to them only and it's it's very interesting to see how young people uh, perceive when when statements like these are made jad us tv de samne aande in aur ek kehn den ki i want to stop all muslims from coming into this country he yeah, says when he says that all mexicans are racist how do you think people in the minority your friends your schoolmates your classmates how do they perceive uh, these things Yeah, so it it you mentioned the Muslim ban that President Trump wanted wanted to implement. Gee. And it actually before he was elected when he was running in 2016, he came out one day and he made that statement that he wanted to ban Muslims from from entering or something that he would do if he was elected. Mm-hmm. And on that exact day, I was taking the metro with some of my friends uh, in Baltimore back home. 
and a group of people ran onto the got onto the onto the metro um, onto the car that we're on saw me and said you we're gonna ban you from this country and then they started saying that I had a bomb under my turban and all of these crazy things that were directly things that the president of the future president elect had just said in his campaign but what gave me hope and why I think you know Joe Biden has and the Democratic Party is such a great movement going forward. My peers on that train, the people, my friends that were with me, stood up and said, "You can't say that. You, this is not who we are." And they weren't Sikh, they weren't Punjabi, they weren't even Indian, mm -hmm. but they stood up. And I think in that moment, even though I felt so depressed and sad that this is where our country has come, that mm -hmm. our president-elect is saying all these horrible things, there's still good people, and especially our young people. There, there are good people who have the best intentions at heart. And that's why I do think going forward that, that message is so strong, uh, that young people uh, of all races, of all creeds, of all beliefs, mm -hmm. I think you know whatever religion background you come from, there's this belief that people are good. And that's what we should uplift. And I think that's what you're seeing youth rally around, is what's best in us, not what's worst. Uh, in this election, we have already seen there, uh, the highest number of votes uh, cast uh, you know, in early ballots. Many uh, states have any total uh, votes in 2016, which have already had an early uh, you know, voting patch. और काफी सारी वोट जेडी है वो यूथ दी वेकी गई है हुए यू नो फर्स्ट टाइम वोटर्स व्हाट डू यू थिंक मोटिवेट्स देम टू कम आउट एंड वोट आई थिंक दे दे सी व्हाट्स एट स्टेक इन दिस इलेक्शन and this is the first election, I think, you know, where social media has been also such a big thing, where as soon as the president says a statement, it's out there, people see what's being said. And because of that, youth are engaged, because youth are the ones that are on these apps and watching and, and watching Twitter and looking what's happening. And more importantly, they, they see what's at stake. You know, usually, usually what I like to think is when we have a presidential election, really any election for any level of office, it's two decent people running against each other who just disagree on certain principles and ideas when it comes to policies. Mm -hmm. But I think in this election, young people see that it's not just that. It's truly a, 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 a vote on for the future of our democracy and for the basic values that we want to hold as a country and as a people. Is it the values of inclusivity, of belonging, of everybody's equal? Or is it you've got to fit this mold of being American and that's all that matters, and if you disagree with that, you're, you're not American, you're un-American, you know? You, you, for the first time ever, have a president saying that he might not even accept the results of the election. Mm -hmm. I mean, just questioning the very foundations of our democracy. And so I think those things together have just inspired the youth to see that this is such a pivotal election that it can't be sat out. And, and, and there's so many close battleground states there's so many states in play that weren't in play four years ago or eight years ago. And you see that, and it's because of them. And so I think that's what's really motivating them to get out there and cast their vote, and, and they realize how important it is. Mm -hmm. 2016, which Vekya Zikaga, lots of people were not very excited about uh, uh, Hillary Clinton, although they might not have been, you know, very. Uh, uh, supportive of uh, Donald Trump, but they did not come out to vote, and that included a lot of young people as well. You think it's going to be different this time? I do. I do. I think it's because I think it's because after four years of Donald Trump, mm -hmm. we see that his campaigning and the rhetoric that he had when he was campaigning, everybody thought, you know, if he gets elected, that's not how he's going to be. He's going to be a normal, you know, president who you disagree with on policy, but he's going to be a decent person. But this has not been the case. And so I think after four years, whereas people before were like, Hillary, yeah, she, I mean, I'm not super excited, but, you know, and Trump, he's not the best, but he'll be all right. Like, he'll, you know, he'll be a decent person in office. People have seen that's not the case. Donald Trump is simply unfit <laughs> to, be, to be, be president of the United States. And so I think people see that, that difference now after four years, and that's what's really motivating them, mm -hmm. is that they see that Donald Trump isn't someone who, just because now he's elected, is going to change and become a decent person. That's just not who he is. And so I think that is what's making that's the difference this time around. So, so I wonder that those already who have been around for you know longer uh, age-wise, experience-wise, 
ha have they grown immune to uh, this thing when you were talking about this decency and all they have seen failings from uh, you know members of uh, other party as well bill clinton uh, being a you know case in point uh, mm -hmm. do you think there's more idealism uh, in the younger voters or donald trump da uh, has done something which is beyond all levels of acceptable levels of decency I definitely it's a combination of both. I'll start with the young people. With the young people, I'll talk about me in particular. I'm 22 yeah. years old. Mm -hmm. For, you know, before Donald Trump was elected, I had just turned, it was at 18, mm -hmm. right? I was barely 18. Mm -hmm. So before that, for all of the time that I was cognizant of the world, understood what was going on, Barack Obama was president, mm -hmm. right? Obama was the president of my youth, of my childhood, and of people my age, and you know, a couple years here and there. We grew up with Obama. And with Obama, there was, he was a decent man. Mm -hmm. Was he perfect? Obviously not, he had his flaws. But he was a decent man, and you and you looked at him and you respected him as who he was. Everybody did. Mm -hmm. So I think for us to see that and then see Donald Trump, that is our perspective. <laughs> and it's, Summit, it's too. जी समय तौड़ना लगा सी एक गल जारी रखेंगे एक छोटी जी ब्रेक दे बात तो सी वेक दे रो द वे फॉरवर्ड द वे फॉरवर्ड इस तौड़ा स्वागत है मैं तौड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह आज असी गल कर रहे हैं एक यंग मेंबर अपनी कम्युनिटी दे समय किंद्रा जी दिनाल समय असी तुसी सालों दसिया कि किवे बराक ओबामा दी डिसेंसी ने तो अनु इम्प्रेस की था एंड हाउ डू यू सी डोनाल्ड ट्रंप्स इन योर वर्ल्ड्स नॉट सो डिसेंट बिहेवियर वर्दी ऑफ यू नो बीइंग द प्रेसिडेंट बट अगर अपन इश्यूज ते गल करिए तुसी एक लॉ स्टूडेंट हो तो सी इस कंट्री दे फंडामेंटल करैक्टर लेट्स ए कैपिटलिस्ट जो करैक्टर हैगा फ्री मार्केट इकोनॉमी का करैक्टर हैगा उस समझते हो एंड नाउ वी हेयर ऑल दीज थिंग्स कमिंग फ्रॉम यू नो क्वार्टर्स लाइक ए ओ सी सो हा हाउ डू यू लुक एट दैट डू यू सी दैट एज सोशलिजम डू यू सी दैट एज कॉन्ट्ररी टू द फंडामेंटल प्रिंसिपल ऑफ दिस कंट्री सो And my, my, it's funny you say that because my major in undergrad was economics. So okay. this is something where, where it's, it's not as, as binary, as simple as it's often made out to be, right? There is, there, it's not either complete socialism or complete, you know, everybody free markets. That's not what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. I think in the U.S., it's not that socialism is some sort of, as, as a pure, like a uh, scholarly aspect, isn't foreign. The fact that we have roads and public hospitals and public schools, those are all aspects of a socialist idea, which simply means, which simply means mm -hmm. that people collectively are paying for things that are used by everyone mm -hmm. or that, that benefit the whole. Okay. And so I think there definitely is some ideas on the far left that I don't personally agree with. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, to simply shoot down any idea from the left simply because it's you, you think it's it's classified as some sort of socialist policy mm -hmm. is, is also not fair. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think there's there's... There's failures in the market, and that's why we have government regulations and things in place in government. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why the government pays for roads. It's because if no private institution could do that and make a profit, right? So the government has to step in and, and do that for us. Mm -hmm. So that's the purpose of government and certain governmental programs. Mm -hmm. And so I think to, to just blanketly say that, you know, oh, socialism is, is completely bad. Mm -hmm. um, yes, of course, if you go all the way to the left and, uh, you know, all the way off the deep end, it's uh, just as bad as going all the way to the right and off that end. Um, mm -hmm. So I definitely think there's a balance that we have to strike. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we've sort of lost that in our sort of super polarization that we've had in the past four years. How, how important are environmental issues to you? They, I mean, it's incredible. I, I, I think especially for young people, mm -hmm. right? We have heard since we can remember that mm -hmm. the world is going to end in a generation or two if we don't change things. And I think for us, growing up and always hearing that, it's something that's at the core of all of our issues of what we want to deal with. We know that if we don't change in our generation, if my generation does not make a change, mm -hmm. if I if I am on my deathbed and this world has not solved their environmental issues, I don't know if my grandkids will see it. We'll see a world, right? It's that dire for us. 
And so it has to be a central policy, a central issue that we deal with in anything. Whether you're talking about economic policy, as you're talking about, mm -hmm. whether you're talking about social policy, there's always some aspect of the, uh, of, of the environment that's impacted. And we have to make sure we're taking a look at that and, and making sure we're addressing it. Otherwise, there's, <laughs> there's simply not going to be a world for us in the future. So I think it's definitely an issue that's at the core of my, in my beliefs and at the core of what a lot of young people want to deal with. And, and do you think the uh, new Green Deal, as proposed by, uh, you know, a, 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 an extreme left wing of the Democratic Party. Is, is that the answer? Is that the solution? So no, I, I mean, I don't think that's. I don't think that's the whole solution. I don't think that. I think. I think the idea is present. What what we're trying to do is we're, we're we're trying to move towards a green future while also stimulating our economy at the same time, mm -hmm. right? And making sure that we're not, uh, uh, you know, completely getting rid of certain sectors of the economy. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the gist of what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I think again, it, because of the polarization that we've had over the last four years, the Green New Deal sort of just gets thrown out there as this crazy wild socialist idea. Mm -hmm. And sure, there are some. There are some aspects of it which are a little out there, but there are also aspects of it that have good ideas in place. Let's, mm -hmm. like, for example, let's transition to green sources of energy and make sure that at the same time we're we're retooling people who are in, say, the oil sector, to then learn how to learn how green how green resources work, so that we can open up complete new sectors where we have thousands of new jobs. At the same time, we're bettering our environment. Um, mm -hmm. So I think th that idea is definitely a valid idea and something that we should certainly explore. Mm -hmm. When it comes to student loans, do you think government should uh, help the students? For sure. I mean, you look at the rate at which at which college tuition has risen versus the rate at which inflation or even income has risen, it's not even close. Mm. And what you're seeing is you're having the first generation of people who are who are less well off and owning houses at a lower rate than the generation before them. And it's no coincidence that they also have the most debt of any generation before them. I mean, you know, someone, even for me, a consideration I have to take before I buy a house in the future is I'm going to have so much student debt that how am I going to make both mortgage payments and how am I going to pay off my debt? And when you can't start buying a house and, and have make that investment and start building equity, you're talking about generational wealth that's being destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think there's definitely has to be something where the government steps in and says, we're going to help. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of solutions out there. Um, and I, again, I think that there's a solution in the middle that we can all agree on, but we just have to get there and stop. So, sort of so you don't because, necessarily support the free education, uh, free college education, but you said something needs to be done. I definitely think that there's a that there should be a path to free college education for certain people mm -hmm. and in certain instances. I also think we really undervalue the value of trade schools mm -hmm. uh, and, and making trade schools free, teaching people trades. Because frankly, I mean, I think we can all agree not everybody needs to have a bachelor's or master's degree, right? There are some people who have great skills, invaluable skills, but they're not honed in colleges and universities. They're honed in trade schools. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's also an aspect we have to look at. And you know, we talked about the environment earlier. Mm -hmm. A great place to start teaching people how to work on renewable technology of the future is in trade schools. And so I think there's, like I said, there's an intersection where we can get a lot of these things done. We just really have to start working together instead of being so polarized. Same, how do you look at uh, the current administration's response to the COVID crisis? What response is my response? I mean, it is it has been baffling to me that we have not had a nationwide response. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have the, the, the White House has not come out and said this is how we're attacking this. We're you know mask mandate. The simple thing, a mask mandate. Mm -hmm. Even if we had just done a nationwide lockdown for three weeks in the beginning of this, we'd we'd be done. We'd be over with. But there was no cohesive nationwide response, and that is only the fault of one person, and that's the person in the White House. You look at in Maryland, when we started our, our lockdown, Georgia was lifting theirs. They were just opening back up. What sense does that make that one that one state is going to start locking down when the, another state's opening up? That, that's, that doesn't make any sense. But the only person that can coordinate that kind of response is the president. Mm -hmm. And he failed to do anything. And that's why we're now, you know, reaching November with, with higher, higher numbers each day. Mm -hmm. Do you think his response to uh, the, co the COVID pandemic is something that's, um, you know, again, uh, causing uh, young people to come out and vote against him? Absolutely. I mean, as young people, I think overwhelmingly, especially those of us that are, you know, in college and, and older, we look at the science and we see the facts and we question what is going on. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember I remember sitting down and, and I missed the end of my graduation. I didn't get I didn't get to graduate undergrad. It was a virtual graduation. That hurt. 
and and to say and to see that still i thought you know at least my law school i'd start on i'd start in person but to see that we're still in you know in the state that we're at of course young people are going to be upset and you know and they look and see well what, are, what is our leader doing and it's really not much of anything um, besides telling us you know that things are getting better when anybody can look at the numbers and see things are getting worse every day um so they're definitely that's driving that's driving young people to to want to make a difference are, make a are young people in your area getting together for parties or they are staying home they're mostly staying home of course there's always going to be those that do that do go out and and those are the people that you know will show up on the news and they'll say oh look at young people they don't care they're doing all this mm -hmm. i don't think that's the case for most young people i think most young people understand that the, the seriousness of this and they want to get over it and and i think that we have to that's why you need a national a national response so that everybody's on the same page i think right now you know the states are saying one thing you know numbers are getting worse then you have the president saying another thing so that also confuses people right about who to trust and what to believe in. And so I think that's that's what's driving all these issues where you see some people going out and, and doing all these things while other people are staying inside and, and being cautious. Some of this one issue which this country has been struggling with for a long time, and there was hope that, the, that uh, you know, the issue has been taken over by young people in the country, so there might be a solution. So that issue is that of gun control. How do you look at the Second Amendment? So I, I believe I believe there is I understand what the Second Amendment is trying to do I, and I and I don't believe that we should repeal the Second Amendment by any means. I do think there needs to be a a, a bottom up look. Uh, and top-down look at how you regulate guns in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, I totally understand those who want to keep gun for sport or want to keep gun, you know, for the shooting range. Mm -hmm. But there's absolutely no reason that I can fathom that anybody needs assault-style weapons, you know, military military-grade weapons, just to have them. Um, and especially the way that we do background checks right now. I mean, the fact that I can walk into Walmart and get a gun uh, in within 15 minutes is is mind-boggling to me. I mean, the, you know, we don't let someone drive a car until they've done like what in maryland is 72 hours of practicing driving and then you also have to go to driving school before that so it's easier to go buy a gun than, than to drive a car i mean that to me just you know doesn't seem to make to make a whole lot of sense so i i i think that there is there is space for people to own firearms and they should be allowed to but i think we need to we need to take a bottom down and top up look at how do we regulate who is getting these guns and how easy it is to get them Mm -hmm. uh, Samay, it's very encouraging to see uh, your views on uh, all these issues. You know, it's very encouraging to see how engaged you are and how well informed you are. Is there anything you would like to say to uh, the youth of the country vis vis the current uh, election? Yeah, listen. This, the future of our nation is up for election. Uh, this isn't just any election where it's, you know, some policies against policies. This is truly values against values. And, and I think that as young people, we have to show that we care and we're here to make a statement and we want our nation to look a certain way and act a certain way going forward and that is under the values of one of the people on the ticket and not the other so don't think that your vote doesn't count i've been parts of elections here in maryland where the, the deciding margin was 14 votes so every vote always counts don't think yours doesn't go out and vote um it's 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 such a great feeling when you do so and you really do have a stake in how our future uh, in our future when you vote those were very uh, encouraging words. Thank you so much, Samay, for taking out the time, for taking out Thank Samay you. and coming on the show today. I am sure we'll see more of you in the future. Thank you Thank very you. much for talking to us today. Ithe asi ek chota ja break lende ya, tonu vekte ya, break te baad tosi dekhte ro the way forward. The way forward is toda fir to swagat hai main toda host Harjot Singh jive ki assi pehle gaya pehle kya presidential election nu ek hafte to bhi kat sama reh gaya hai aur ajj assi gal kar rahe ha apne community members nal oh kive vekhde pe in dono candidates nu aur is presidential uh, you know cycle nu hun uh, assi gal karange sade community member Jyotpreet Sahi ji nal Jyotpreet ji toda bahut bahut swagat hai Thank you, Arjot Sanjay. Thank you for having me again. Ji, Jodhpreet Ji, naal to see pehle bhi rubru hoye ho, or aake apne issues in issues upper hamesha apne comments den de rein, bade well informed onade comments on den. Jodhpreet Ji, kime vekhriyo to see saal election cycle nu? 
This has Josen ji a kafi na interesting election cycle hai given that ke 2016 de which we were expecting ke Hillary Clinton jehdi oh jitegi te ekdam as a surprise president Trump jit gaye that was a surprise te ode karke aa jada election cycle hai lot of people are not sure ke bhai assi jade hage a polling onu trust kariye ya na kariye te also ke bhai lot of people jade ke pehla not as convinced by Trump se ke, it appears they are getting convinced by Trump as well that maybe Trump is a better choice. So this election cycle is very interesting and still everything still hangs in a balance. Hmm. Kai jade polls ano dasrein ki uh, Joe Biden has a lead uh, nationwide. Thoda can manna hai ki edan di gal hai nahi. We got burned by the polls for Hillary Clinton. As far as I think not just me, but everybody else has been extra vigilant and careful about believing the polls. The big unknown factor is that the big unknown factor is that the big unknown factor is that people who are shy about telling polling companies about their support for uh, Trump. Hmm. So people might be shy about that. So that's a big unknown factor. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's creating some hesitancy in telling, saying people that, okay, Joe Biden definitely going to win. Mm -hmm. So that's there. Jodhpreet ji, why do people hesitate to say that we will vote for Trump? What is it about uh, why Trump is going to vote for Trump? What is it about what he has done or the way he behaves? Why do people feel hesitation to vote for President Trump? So, a lot of things in his uh, personal life okay. and a lot of things in his uh, official life as a president, he has said and done that will make even many of his supporters uncomfortable. Hmm. So, how he treated women, Mm -hmm. will make pretty much everybody, God, fair and family, man, uncomfortable ke bhai somebody was treating their family member, female family member like that, mm -hmm. they will feel uncomfortable with that. Gee. So they will not be willing to go out openly and say, yes, I go one, I support Trump. Also in his uh, official uh, career, things like stunts like holding Bible out of, outside the church after, you know, smoke bombing the protesters, protesters over there. Gee. A lot of people who even support his religious stand does not agree with that mm -hmm. and find it difficult based on that to openly come out and say. Mm -hmm. Also, how a lot of these things like where his stand is regarding people of color, mm -hmm. people of uh, immigrants, mm -hmm. also stand regarding racism. A mm -hmm. lot of people feel uncomfortable actually supporting him on those issues. And, and why do they support him then? Because of some of the other things, like uh, he has been able to pack the Supreme Court. Gee. So he has been able to pack the Supreme Court and he has been able to create an illusion of that economy is doing better just based on the stock market is doing better. Hmm. So those kind of things may lead to some people actually on the inside support it, but because they know that socially this would be not an acceptable position, people don't want to go ahead and openly say it. Ji 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 ji. Jodhpreet ji, as a as a minority in this country, uh, as a member of the Sikh community. Tonu kede issues sab to wade lag den kisi candidate nu churan lai president di position lai. So, as a minority, I would like to see a president who makes me feel American. Hmm. You know that I am a part of America. I am as American as anybody else. Hmm. That my kids will be safe here that okay. my family would be safe here mm -hmm. and my family would be respected here and welcomed here. Gee. And I honestly, I do not see that part in Trump. Gee. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I personally, myself, I support Biden. Hmm. 
Hmm. And there are a lot of other qualities that have Biden has that Americans, even not only minority, but all Americans should look at Gee. that Biden has. So something like, uh, you know, who has been tested through the tragedy? Trump has never faced tragedy in his life. Biden's life is full of tragedy, how he, as a freshman senator, lost his wife and child, but was still able to care for his family, his two young boys. Mm -hmm. As a vice president, he lost uh, his son to brain tumor. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he also struggled with his son's drug addiction. So those are the challenges that many of the families face. He himself faced the health crisis. Hmm. And when you have a, so, so what I'm saying is that these are the challenges that we as a normal citizens face that he has faced and he can more likely or is more able to empathize with us. Compared to President Trump, hmm. even like looking at Biden's life, even like his opponent, people like Senator Graham has said that in 2015, that if you can't admire Joe Biden as a person, mm -hmm. you got a problem. He is a good man as God has ever created. Trump But these are his words in 2015. <laughs> Jodhpur ji, ek uh, you know uh, jadi image creation on the air, oh ek uh, bahot vada part hai politics da. Main main toh ek cheez puchna chahunga. Uh, you know, you always uh, give us such informed opinions. Ek jada opinion hai ki uh, liberals are the elites, liberal elites, democrats jade. But am ek uh, you know bade regular household to uh, Joe Biden ande. Hillary Clinton is a very arm uh, you know, household to I. Bill Clinton is a arm household to I. So, uh, Obama is a arm household to I. So, Ustu Paila, Jimmy Carter is a arm household to I. And Jede Sare Republican, Agarapa Pishle Charpanch presidents, they have always been, uh, you know, rich people, millionaires, billionaires, or, uh, you know, unless uh, at least uh, they claim to be billionaires. Then, why uh, this tag of elitism? Uh, with the Democrats, is, is that a false um, that has been, You know, that's something that how again President Trump talks about okay, media bias. Gee. That's until more open media came out, like Twitter and uh, some of the website-based media channels came out, Gee. or the CNN came out. Most of the media was controlled by the big families. Mm -hmm. And they started creating this illusion of uh, leftist elites. And the other thing is that when they created this illusion of leftist elite, there were a couple of big families that were supporting the, what was the theories on the left. Mm -hmm. And they just used them as an example like, yeah, this is a leftist elite. But when you look at it, the left is composed of unions. Mm -hmm. Mostly, there there are labor unions on the left. They are regular blue collar workers. They are teachers. They are firefighters. That's what is on the left. Gee. And if you look on the right, look at who the donors for the right are: the media moguls, mm -hmm. uh, Fox News. Um, you can look at uh, the media mogul who owns a lot of casinos, mm -hmm. uh, oil companies, developers. They are their supporter. That's where their funding comes from. While the funding for the left. Mm -hmm. comes from basically everyday worker. Mm -hmm. um, ones who are creating this illusion of uh, leftist elites, mm -hmm. they are just creating illusion for their right wings people who don't actually go look at the facts. And I mean, they will buy whatever you give them, so there's nothing you can do about it. Jodhpuri mm -hmm. ji, uh, ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇਸ਼ੂਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਕੁਝ ਹੋਰ ਸਵਾਲ ਪੁੱਛਾਂਗੇ ਇੱਕ ਛੋਟੀ ਜੀ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਦੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਫਿਰ ਹਾਜ਼ਰ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਇੱਕ ਛੋਟੀ ਜੀ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਦੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵੇਖਦੇ ਰਹੋ ਦ ਵੇ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਦ ਵੇ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਇਸ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਫਿਰ ਤੋਂ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਹੋਸਟ ਹਰਜੋਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਤੇ ਜਾਣ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਗੱਲ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਜੋਤਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਸਾਹਿਜੀ ਨਾਲ 
ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਚੀਜ਼ ਵੇਖੀ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੋਸਟਲੀ ਯੂ نو ਸਾਊਥ ਏਸ਼ੀਅਨਸ ਇੰਡੀਅਨਸ ਸਾਡੀ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਸਿੱਖ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਡੈਮੋਕ੍ਰੇਟਸ ਦੀ ਤਰਫ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਰੁਝਾਨ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਬਟ ਇਸ ਵਾਰ ਕਾਫੀ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਟਰੰਪ ਦੀ ਪਰਟਿਕੂਲਰਲੀ ਸਿੱਖ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਸ ਦੀ ਕੀ ਵਜ੍ਹਾ ਵੇਖਦੇ ਹੋ uh i have talked to mckayan nal jehde as well as president trump di support kar rahe ne main unna nal gal kiti hai ji ke tusi unna di kyu support kar rahe ho te there have been uh, two themes basically ji ek ta theme hai ke bhai ke jehde apne aap nu jis tarah ke bhai small business owner kehnde ha ji they just look at the tax advantage they are getting through president trump's plans and they are supporting them for that mm mm-hmm. ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਅ ਦ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਆ ਦ ਵਨ ਹੂ ਆਈ ਵੁੱਡ ਸੇ ਇਸ ਕਿ ਬਈ ਈਜ਼ਲੀ ਕਨਵਿੰਸਡ ਬਾਈ ਦੈਟ ਕਿ ਬਈ ਆਈ ਐਮ ਹੂ ਥਿੰਕਸ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਆਲਸੋ ਅ ਸਮਾਲ ਬਿਜ਼ਨਸ ਓਨਰ ਔਰ ਐਸਪਾਇਰ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਬਿਕਮ ਦੈਟ ਇਵੈਂਚੁਅਲੀ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਲੁਕਿੰਗ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਕਿ ਲਾਈਕ ਓਕੇ ਯੂ نو ਇਫ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਟਰੰਪ ਸਟੇਜ਼ ਦੈਨ ਵੈਨ ਆਈ ਬਿਕਮ ਅ ਸਮਾਲ ਬਿਜ਼ਨਸ ਓਨਰ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਹੈਵ ਥਿਸ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਟੈਕਸ ਐਡਵਾਂਟੇਜ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਐਡ ਕਿ देयर ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਥਰਡ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਹੂ ਮਾਈਟ ਬੀ ਮੋਟੀਵੇਟਿਡ ਬਾਈ ਸਮ ਅਦਰ ਬਾਇਸਿਸ ਬਾਇਸਿਸ ਬੇਸਡ ਔਨ ਦ uh religion or society and uh, what their religious and, and uh, societal priorities are and if they line up with president trump uh, and then again there are some that who do it based on uh, personal experience but the bigger chunk i would say is where you are seeing support from sikh community mm. is from those who are small business owners even though if they never touch that mark that mark that decides if your taxes are going up under biden or not mm-hmm. um they somehow are made to believe under biden their taxes will go up so they are supporting trump yeah again uh, I, i don't know how true is that that the republican uh, party is somehow better for business particularly for small business but that's a debate for uh, another day uh some yeah, it's just a what they feel it's it's mo- we mostly more based less on facts and what we feel you know we we see that deficits have gone uh, you know higher under republican presidents the two greatest uh, economic disasters we have had you know to uh, 2019 uh, uh, and then 2008 were again uh, under republican administrations but uh, you know assi is bare fir gal karange jithe assi president trump the uh, support the gal uh, kiti hai amongst the sikh community ek jehdi cheez encouraging hai ki assi kafi apni community de members dekh rahe hain who are participating in the political uh, process in this country bahut sare candidates samne aaye and particularly california which jithe ki sade community de numbers ve kafi hage ki ki kehna chahoge tusi uh yes uh jo ji as well as california de vich punjabi community de vich kafi jehde local candidates local elections de vich khade ne ji they range all the way from uh, school boards ji. to city council candidates to city mayor candidates to county supervisor candidates mm-hmm. the primary elections de vich some have even tried to become be in the assembly members as well ji. they did not cuz california open primary hundi hai they were unable to clear that mark ji. uh but the lot of punjabis are participating in the politics and that's a good thing Ji. that is i think uh, it's bringing awareness among the local community mm-hmm. it is also becoming uh, as a role models for the younger generation ji uh, if we start our if we start with the school boards and city council seats we can inspire our younger generation to go run for assembly members and senators and the congressmen mm-hmm. and this is the learning ground and i think our younger generation should participate in these campaigns work with these campaigns to learn the skills mm-hmm. and to see how the campaigning is done how the political process work and uh, get ready for the the bigger races that are coming up ji 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 a political engagement bahut zaruri hai aur jin numbers vich samne aa rahe hain bahut encouraging hai kai countries vich canada vich england vich assi dekh rahe hain ki bade actively sade committee members utthe di local politics vich local you know civic discourse vich you know shamil han te 
ਇੱਥੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਯੂਐਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹ ਨਵਾਂ ਟ੍ਰੈਂਡ ਵੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿਸ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਮਿਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਤੋਂ so for uh, most part um, uh, the community has been supportive of our candidates ji for most part ji i would say uh, there is some you know jis tarah ke har community de vich hunda hi hai ji there is some level of uh, groupism mm-hmm. uh, california de vich bhi hai Jee. there's a groupism among the community they based on those groups uh, depending on where that candidate falls uh, the other group may not as openly support or even oppose mm-hmm. the candidates they but in general ke jehde loki not associated jehde kise bhi group nal associated nahi hage unna de kolon ehi sunan nu milda hai ke assi hamesha je saadu punjabi candidate hovega ballot de utte te assi us punjabi candidate nu support karange ha hun kai vari edda hunda ke if you look at yuba city they have large population in some races othe ek school board race hai jehde ch tin candidate ne tinne hi punjabi ne so i say ke at least sanu inna te hai na ke othe ਜਿੱਤੇਗਾ ਤਾਂ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਹੋਈ ਜੀ ਸੋ ਉੱਥੇ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਹੋ ਸਕਦਾ ਬਟ ਅਦਰਵਾਈਜ਼ ਵੇਅਰ देयर ਇਜ਼ ਜਸਟ ਵਨ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਆਲ ਸਪੋਰਟਿੰਗ ਥੈਟ ਮੋਸਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਇਜ਼ ਸਪੋਰਟਿੰਗ ਥੈਟ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟ ਜੀ 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 ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਯੂ نو ਵੀ ਲਰਨ ਕਿ ਇੱਕ ਇੱਕ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨ ਵੀ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਆਈ ਹੈ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਯੂ نو ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਸਪੋਰਟਿੰਗ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟਸ ਪਾਰਟਿਕੂਲਰਲੀ ਸੀ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟਸ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਾਰਟਿਕੂਲਰ ਨੋਰਮਸ ਨੂੰ ਜਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਆਈਡੀਓਲੋਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਐਗਰੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਨ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਦੱਸੋਗੇ ਇਸ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਚ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਕੈਲੀਫੋਰਨੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਣਾਈ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਐਸਪਨ ਥੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਸ਼ੋਰਟ ਫੋਰ ਅਮਰੀਕਨਸ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਸਿਕ ਪੋਲਿਟੀਕਲ ਇੰਗੇਜਮੈਂਟ ਨੈਟਵਰਕ ਜੀ the goal of this uh, organization is not only to support the candidates but also to raise awareness among uh, sikh community about the lower level of the races ji aam taur te hun bhi taqreeban kafi had tak jo si dekho is tarah hunda ke sanu president di election bare to sab kuch pata hunda ji governor bare vi pata hunda up to congressman we know a lot of things ji par jadon assi us to thalladiyan races te aa jande ha how do they affect us uh what is the stand of individual candidates what have the candidates done for the community in general or in particular for sikh community ode bare sanu kuch nahi pata hunda ji te na hi sanu eh pata hunda ke bhai us candidate nu reach kitna karna hai so to overcome those hurdles we uh, we along with some other people we decided to form aspen ji te aspen ne as saal after talking to several candidates mm-hmm. we decided to endorse very few only six candidates you know we endorsed kita mostly local because we felt that we know knew about those candidates and their history the most ji 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 we feel uh, we, ਜੋਤਪ੍ਰੀ ਜੀ ਇਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜੋ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਇਮੀਡੀਏਟਲੀ ਟੱਚ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਨ ਉਹ ਤੇ ਲੋਕਲ ਇਸ਼ੂਜ਼ ਹਨ ਔਰ ਲੋਕਲ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟਸ ਹਨ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਜਾਣਨਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੱਸਣਾ ਚਾਹੋਗੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਕੌਣ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟਸ ਹੈਗੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਐਂਡੋਰਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਸੋ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਵੀ ਐਂਡੋਰਸਡ ਆਪਣੇ ਸਰਬਜੀਤ ਕੌਰ ਚੀਮਾ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਉਹ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਆ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਅੱਧੀ ਵਾਰੀ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਵੀ ਤੇ ਸ਼ੀ ਇਜ਼ ਰਨਿੰਗ ਫਾਰ ਅ ਮੇਅਰ ਫਾਰ ਯੂਨੀਅਨ ਸਿਟੀ ਜੀ ਠੀਕ so when running she has been a school board member and she has been an active community member for a while mm-hmm. she has a long history of community service as well mm-hmm. and she aligns with the issues that we as a sex believe in uh, which include environmental protection and also the protection of the groups that are most vulnerable mm-hmm. so based on those things and her history of community service we decided to endorse her ji 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 jodpreet ji uh, we are running out of time i i urge you to see sanu if you want to tell us all the candidates that you have endorsed sure so the other candidates we have endorsed is for a school board we have endorsed uh, jitendra palkar sahi Ji. for a city of hayward we have endorsed mark salinas mm-hmm. and for a healthcare eden healthcare district we have endorsed pam russo as well ji 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 so that means it's not just sick candidates you are endorsing you are just endorsing candidates which you think would be best for our our community 
Yes. That's, that's an yeah. awesome thought. एक बड़ा अच्छा थोड़ा उपराला है असी हमेशा अपने यू नो कमेटी मैंबर्स को एनकरेज करते हैं इतने के पॉलिटिकल प्रोसैस में शामिल होने वास्ते और ये जी एक नवी डेवलपमेंट है एक नवी थोड़ी ये ऑर्गनाइजेशन सामने आई है ये एक बहुत ही इंपोर्टेंट स्टैप है जोतप्रीत जी साढ़े नाल गल कर अज बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया क्विकली कम्यूनिटी कोई मैसेज देना चाहोगे विजा विज दिस प्रेजिडेंशियल इलेक्शन Yeah, so with the with this presidential election, I would say that the community should look at that who is good for them as a community rather than look at. who is better for their taxes yeah. if your community prosper you will make more money and you know you may have to pay a little more taxes but you will end up with a more money in your pocket jo don't look at tax rates but see <laughs> who can bring ji. more money to the community ji sade naal gal karan da toda bahut bahut shukriya ac sada aaj da show tusi vekhde raho the way forward